Hey guys, just wanted to take a quick second to go over that in-body 270 scale printout of our results that we got. This is just a random person's, you know, sheet, and I'm hiding all the info to confirm who it might be. Uh, but anyways, here we go. So you step on the scale. Basically what it does is it sends a few currencies through your body. One, it measures your total body water mass. Then it sends one to measure your dry lean mass. Okay, your bones and cartilage and stuff. And then obviously it took your overall body weight in the beginning there. Basically what it does is it adds those top two, subtracts it from your overall weight, and then we get our body fat mass. Body fat mass, then divided by our weight, gives us our percent body fat, all right? And this little obesity analysis there is just showing the comparison between the old BMI index, all right? Don't really need to pay attention to that. It's just showing that it's you know more accurate, that's all. Let's go back up to the muscle fat analysis. So we have a bar graph showing our weight, our skeletal muscle mass, which is another currency that it sends in your body there, and then your overall body fat mass in pounds. All right, the dash here in the middle, either side of that and the, the lines on either side there is basically the, the normal range for your height, age, and gender, okay? So we see the bar graphs here, the weight slightly above normal or average for this person's height, age, and gender. Skeletal muscle mass, a little above um, you know, the normal range there, and body fat mass in the normal range, but slightly above that 100, you know, perfectly average um, for this person's height, age, and gender, okay? So we wanna maintain skeletal muscle mass. We like that one outside the normal range. If this person wanted to do some body composition work and improve that overall uh, percent body fat, then we would probably recommend you know trying to just bring the weight and the body fat down um, just a little bit towards those normal ranges, right? And that's what we see the uh, calculation or the the recommendation rather that it provides us in that top right corner is if he, this person were to lose 3.1 pounds we'd be back towards those normal ranges over here. So that's the pre prescription and correlation there. Segmental lean analysis, honestly don't even pay attention to this. This is really just for those who are looking to do like a uh, bodybuilding or you know looking to be perfectly symmetrical. So don't worry about that too much. Down at the bottom here, this is just gonna be a graph that um, highlights you know every time you step on the scale, you know your progress um, and connects the dots there a little bit. So kind of cool. Last thing I wanna point out though, is in the top, we got a lean body mass number and a basal metabolic rate number. We wanna maintain, if not in increase, both of those numbers. Okay, so the more lean body mass we have, um, you know, the lower our overall percent body fat will be. The basal metabolic rate is a cool number to know because if you're tracking you know, your macros or calories and stuff like that, your basal metabolic rate is the number of calories you need to intake to just remain the same if you were to just sit on the couch all day. So if you take that number and then you know, say you're consuming just about that much each day, and then you add in your daily activities and you know, exercise and stuff like that, and you have a caloric deficit, Right? And then you're probably working towards improving your overall body composition. So that's, you know, in a nutshell, what this sheet is telling us. There's a little bit more in depth that we can go into it, but for now, that's probably plenty. So hopefully that helps you guys. We'll see you guys soon.